Christian Baptist Church, where we have our pastor, Ronald Moncree, who is the shepherd of the flock. We'd like to invite you to spread the word, tell your friends, join us on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, if you wish to come out to the sanctuary, we are in compliance with our social distancing mandate located here at 3645 Norman Bridge Road in the capital city of Montgomery, Alabama. We also encourage you to make your prayer request known. We pray for our sick, shut in, the bereaved family. We know that we love you, we have you in mind, and we want the best for you. We also encourage those members that wish to contribute. They may do so by contacting the church uh, using our Give the Fly app. You can download the app or you can go to givetofly.com, make your contribution, or you can mail it in, whatever your choice. Know that your contribution, your gift, your tithe, offer, first fruit, or your redemptive gift will be used for the advancement of the kingdom in accordance with the word of God. Now we are dealing with two types of wisdom today. Uh, scripture comes from James chapter number 3, verse 13 through 18, and chapter number 5, verse 7 through 12. And we just want to encourage you to follow along as we traverse this scripture. Our objective is to explain the value of acting with wisdom from above and with patience amidst trials. Repent for actions that we have done out of earthly wisdom and lack of patience. Embrace wisdom from God and seek to demonstrate it consistently and patiently. Amen. And we just thank God for these words, for these objectives. Let's look briefly at those and let's talk about it. There is a value of acting with earthly big, uh, with uh, heavenly wisdom from above. And such wisdom comes directly from God. Now the Bible and life are filled with stories. One story is about King Solomon who was confronted with the choice between two mothers one mother said that the baby was hers. Another woman said, another mother said that the baby was hers. So Solomon listened patiently. Notice what happened. He listened to both sides of the story, and then he made his decision. And his decision was, hey, bring me my sword. I just cut the baby down in half. I give one mother one half, and another mother the other half. And of course, the true mother said, now, nah, you know, if you cut the baby in half, the baby's going to lose his life. I tell you what, just let her go ahead on and have it. And so by her speaking up, she demonstrated that she put the child's life above um, personal ambition. So Solomon knew, hey, that's the real and true mother right there. Another example of wisdom and patience is we see Jesus at the age of 13 in the tabernacle. The scripture says, this is not what some the scripture says, he was in the tabernacle with master teachers. You might say teachers that had masters, PhDs, postdocs that were experts in their field. He said he was hearing and listening to them. He was listening to what they say and asking questions. And the scripture says that he spoke with wisdom that was above his years. So that goes to show you that wisdom has nothing to do with your age. It has to do with your ability to study and apply what thus says the Lord. Now you can be young and be wise, such as in the case with Jesus, or you can be old and be wise because God has granted you this, you learn from life experiences and you apply what thus said the Lord, or you can be old and still like, like a child. You've all heard people say, why don't you just grow up? You know, so sometimes we got to act our age. And, and Prince had a song that said, uh, act your age and not your shoe size. You know, so uh, we, need to, we need to keep that in mind. And don't beat yourself up. Don't tell yourself what you can't learn. Don't tell yourself what you can't do. You got to watch 
how you attach things to yourself and you got to watch how people, how you allow people to attach things to you. So we're dealing with this hymn. So the first few verses says, uh, in the beginning at verse number 13, and we want to look kind of briefly at that, it said, it says, says who is wise? And this is James chapter, chapter number three. And uh, it says, dealing with, with the subject, who is wise? What make a person wise? Are they wise because of life experiences? Are they wise because they went to school, got a trade? But who is wise? So when, when we look at it in James, it begins to pose the question, who is a wise man that do with knowledge among you? So if you, according to the scripture, if you want to know who wise, how do they life lined up with the word of God? How do they practice what they have learned in church, Sunday school, Bible study, revivals, conferences? How do they practice all these preachings and teachings that they've heard? Okay? He said, let them show out a good conversation. Okay? What is it that they say? Okay? So if you're going to say that you understand, if you came to church, you came to Bible study, and you said amen to what's going on, you waved your hand, you shouted hallelujah, then your conversation ought to reflect such. Okay? Even if you act out of character, what's in you ought to let folks know, no, nah, that's, not, that's not you. You shouldn't act like that. Okay? Then it says, that you should go forth not only in conversation, but your works with meekness of wisdom. In other words, you're not a brawler. You're not somebody that's always kicking up dust. And I know they got a lot of movements going on now. This is an election year, and I believe spiritually we need to pay attention. We need to be vigilant. Above all, we need to be prayed of. Now look, look what's happening. On one front, they got this election that's going on where we're trying to select the next leader of this country. And like I said to you before, I'm not endorsing no, no candidate, but when you look at Democrat, Republican, or whatever political party is in the race, you got to look at the person's qualifications. You got to look at can they carry out the office? Can they do what's in the best interest of all the citizens of the United States of America? Now, if you are listening to this, okay, and you got your favorite political party, I want you to put party politics aside and just look at the qualifications. Because, see, ultimately, this is someone that you're going to have to follow, you're going to have to respect. So you need to look at what it is that they're supposed to do Versus an agenda. I'll leave it at that. So in other words, you know, not only what they say, but how they back up their words. Same thing in the church. If we go call ourselves Christians, if we go call ourselves believers, then guess what? We have to back up what we study in this world with our actions. So when everybody else is acting crazy, when everybody else is going about their business, we got to have some restraint. We got to have some discipline. Sometimes we can't say what we want to say. We got to know how to season it. We got to know how to communicate with people so that they want to listen to what we say. And we can't be so hot headed that we think everything that we want is right. There's a way that you can present your viewpoints without being rude about being disrespectful. Now, let me give you an example. If you've ever seen a court case where you go downtown and sit in the courtroom and I, I pray that you get a chance to do it, it's rules on how you conduct yourself. You just can't blurt out. You can't interrupt other people. Why? They go call you out of order. Well, if it's out of order in the court, how come it's not out of order in life? How come we still are having violence and violence against each other? Okay? How come families can't get together? How come relationships can't get together? How can you say you love a person, but you can call them everything from A to Z, 
and then you want to show up on February the 14th with a red box of chocolate and some dead flowers talking about you love them. That ain't love. The word of God said love is patient, said love is kind, and it envies not, it doesn't consider it itself. And guess what? You gotta have all those elements in there if you want to consider it love. Jesus said the meek shall inherit the earth. So how you handle yourself dictates wisdom. How you go about getting what you desire dictates what you know. It ain't so much what you say you know, you know. You don't get wisdom just because you show up and you take the test and pass the test. Now you get wisdom when you realize what you have inside of you and you practice that, okay? I can read a book about karate and ninjutsu, but that don't make me a karate master and a ninja because I read the book. Neither does it make me a car because I go out there and stand in the garage and, and start blinking my eyes and saying, womp, womp. You know, so we got to take a look at that. Now watch in the 14th verse. It says, and this is, this is sound doctrine. I really like the way it is. This is a verse, but this verse is actually pointing out different types of spirits. Now, I'm going to read the 14th. I'm going to read the NIV version. But if you harbor that means something's inside you. If you holler bitter envy, envy is one. Selfish ambition, that's another. Okay? And do not boast about it or deny the truth. Okay? Now let's look at the King James Version. This is verse number 14. But if you have bitter envy, strife in your heart, glory not and, not, and lie not against the truth. In other words, don't act like nothing is wrong with you. Okay? When somebody go to point it out, at least listen to them. Matter of fact, if they never point it out, ask God to reveal it to you. Now, Let's define quickly what, what this word, bitter envy. What's bitter envy? You so jealous at what somebody else got that you dislike the person. Now you really don't have a dislike for the person, uh, but, 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 but you hate them because maybe they got a position. Maybe they got uh, a, 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 a opportunity and you want what they have okay you want it but it just ain't came your way yet and because you want it so bad now you dislike the person and I said it before once the devil can use you and make a fool out of you he'll take every opportunity he got if you open the door he he glad to take it. He just like a gust of wind. He'll blow in on your situation and you won't know what's going on. But you need to learn. Wisdom teaches us to rejoice when you bless. The reason you rejoice, the way that he bless you is the way that he will bless me. Faith is not fact. Okay? Sometimes you don't have to walk through hurdles. Sometimes you run through them. Sometimes you jump over them. Sometimes you fly over them. It's all up to God. Now he want to get you your blessing, but I declare and decree that he will get it to you. You ain't got to be mad at nobody. You ain't got to cut your eyes at nobody. That's bitter envy. That is a spirit. And you have to cast that down. My favorite analogy of that is we talking about Billy over here, but I can remember back in school, I heard some girls arguing. One girl said, I can't stand her. She make me sick. And somebody said, well, what don't you like about her? Why, why is it that you can't stand this person? Watch the answer. I don't know. I just don't like her. That's got to be one of the most ignorant statements ever made in the history of man. You haven't created nobody. You didn't form DNA. 
You know what I'm saying? What right do you have to say that you can't stand somebody with your messed up self? All of us got issues and problems. But for you to just pick out arbitrarily that you don't like somebody is a slap in the face to God's creation. Now, if you say, well, hey, this person is saying this or doing that, and I just do agree with that. I don't like that. That's a horse of a totally different color. But for you just to say you don't like somebody, and then fast forward, we want to talk about Black Lives Matter. Let me tell you something. First of all, God breathed into our nostrils. And he didn't segregate one when it says that in Genesis. So this bitterness, envy, and this strife that we have against one another got to stop long before we have campaigns and we march talking about black lives matter, all life matter. God said he breathed into our nostrils the breath of life and we became a living soul which means we have a mind, we got a soul, we got intellect, we got imaginations, we got all of these abilities that God has blessed us with to show forth his handiwork and we run around here taking it out on somebody because of their skin color, because of what side of town they on, because of their political affiliation, because of their preference. When are we going to see that two wrongs don't make a right? Now I understand the move, but I'm going to leave you with this and I got to move on. If you go fight, you need to know how to fight with wisdom. I said it before, I said it again, we cannot tear up our own neighborhood and justify doing that because of what happened in another state. We got to learn how to fight strategically and effectively to get the desired result. And until you fight the right way, you won't get the result. You'll forever be, be uh, oppressed. So let's move on. Let's look. We dealt with better, we dealt with selfish ambition in our heart. And, and, and then we can't show up. Says so such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, is unspiritual, and is what demonic. Now I know don't nobody want to say, hey, you, you, you just don't run up on a person and say, hey, you demonic, you got some bad spirits in. But let me share something with you. Don't get the big head because you ain't dealing with problems that somebody else dealing with. We all have issues. Listen, I ain't talking about nobody. I got some issues myself. I got some things I'm working on. I got some stuff I got to deal with. And guess what? There are only two sides. It's either godly or ungodly. See, there's no in between. It's either spiritual or unspiritual. It's either holiness or the mind. There is no in between of it. Right? And if you plant a fig tree, you cannot expect to get grapes out of the fig tree. Your seeds will come up. The word of God says your seed, your sin will find you out. See, that's why you have to repent. That's why you have to be honest with God. That's why you have to ask God to show you. Because this thing will manifest. And so what happens is that's why we have the tools that we have in the church that we do enable the ministry to go forth. First of all, we want to get the word to you. And then we have prayer. If nothing else goes on in the church, prayer is supposed to go on. Okay? That's the difference. Yeah. We deal not only with the spiritual things, because the word of God says this really he is an unclean spirit. So whatever is inside of you is blocking the full maturity, the full manifestation of how God want to move through. That's the mark. So if it's unclean, that means he can't dwell in it. Now watch this. The quicker you go to God and say, look, I need your help with this, the quicker he can help you. Okay? The more he can start the process. Your spiritual life is like putting clothes in the washing machine. You put the clothes in there, you put the powder, the detergent, fabric softener, whatever the case may be, then it fills with water and it starts to agitate. And see, that's what God is doing with you. He's processing you. He's getting you to be more like him. You are already made in his image. And he said in his word that he's faithful and just to finish the work that he started in you. God working on a masterpiece with you. 
And it doesn't matter what people say. Now let's look at verse 17. It said, but wisdom that is from above is first pure. Anything God gives you is pure. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference between pure water and flavored water. Now, flavored water is appealing, but it ain't good for you because it's got some additives in it. It's got some stuff in it that make it look good, but it's really not good. When you start to look at the ingredients of a lot of foods, you find out that the food is good, but it's the additives that make it bad. So what have we been adding to God's creation that make us so bad? Huh? And you can look at society today, we don't have time to treat it, but we've added a lot of things that make God's creation look bad. Look at what we done did with the church. We got more denominations of church than God ever intended. Denomination is a man-made thing. God ain't never said nothing about no denomination. He just said my church. Matter of fact, he said he coming back after a church. So that make me think if we got over 200 plus denominations, that might even confuse God if he wasn't defined in nature. We done chopped it up. You know, we got a black church, a white church. We, you know, we got churches for this economic group, that economic group. We got churches that say they play instruments. Some say they don't play instruments. Some believe in the spirit. Some say that. When did we get so confused? How can we go to the architect? How can we go to the master builder and tell him what his creation is supposed to look like? But see, the reason we got confused is because we took the spirit out. We stopped following what come down from God and we start thinking ourselves. We start putting earthly wisdom over spiritual insight, over spiritual wisdom. And we miss it every time. But don't nobody want to admit that they're wrong. Everybody got to be right. It's always they right and you wrong. Come on now, that, that don't even sound good statistically. You the only one right out of all these millions and billions of people? Come on now. That makes no sense. Watch what it says. Then it says it's peaceful. How many times have you seen arguments in relationships, in organizations, and, and, and you finally get people calm down. And you say, I just want to ask you a question. I just want to ask this one thing. What's this argument about? And what you find out that the argument is about is about one opinion over another opinion. Not necessarily a procedure, what's right or wrong, but because people feel so strongly and passionate about what they believe, that they're willing to get out of a peaceful moment, okay, to, to express their opinion. And then what happens is this right here, <clears throat> okay? When we get out of that peaceful mode and we start raising our voice, we become ineffective. We turn back the hands of time. Everything that somebody before us has done when we start acting ungodly, unpeaceable, we turn back. We revert back to square one. Listen, to move forward, we ain't trying to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to go backwards. We're trying to go forward. Some things shouldn't even be a struggle to us. We should have learned by now. Gentlemen, I, can, I would like to just go one week. I would be so happy I wouldn't know what to do. I would like to go one week without seeing people cuss each other out. I would like to see boyfriends and girlfriends get along, husbands and wives get along without calling each other everything but a child or daughter. And then what's so amazing to me, you do it in front of the kids. You display all this anger, all this violence in front of the kids and you wonder why they messed up. Remember I told you the devil will use you if you let them. What you're doing, you're sowing that into them. You're breeding that into them. And when they grow up messed up, you got the audacity to ask the question, I don't know where they get it from. Well, number one, they ain't asked to come here. They came here because you got with somebody that you now can resolve your differences with. And you're showing them how they shouldn't be, but that's how they go grow up. Okay? 
So let's look at it. peaceful, gentle, easy to be entreated. That means you can talk, you can work out full of mercy, watch this, and good fruit. Now, it said without partiality and without hypocrisy. Okay? So now, if you says that you're supposed to be full of good fruit, what good fruit do you supposed to have? And then in, in Galatians, it lists the fruit. Huh? Okay, it lists the fruit. It says you're supposed to be full of love, joy, peace, sound mind, long suffering. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's what you're supposed to be full of. You ain't supposed to be full of those other spirits that cause you to act up, want to cut each other, you know. And I ain't never seen such a violent group of people, generation, in all days of my life. You know, recently there was something that happened. Uh, two childhood friends had a, com had a, a confrontation. And where they end up, one lost his life. And the question was asked, said, wait, hey, what's the reason for this? Two childhood friends, two people that knew each other, growed up together, lost their life because they were crossing the street walking too slow. That don't make no sense. You got to ask. You just got to step back for a moment. Do you have something inside of you that might make you react like that? And when they said the doors of the church is over, they said, Dude, is there anyone that needs prayer? Uh, uh, come on down to the altar or make your prayer request known. You need to deal with the issues that's inside of you because I can promise you what happened with these two young men didn't happen overnight. It's like yeast, it bred, it grows up in them and it grows and then one day it just matured and boom, you get this explosion. So you got to, you got to understand that yeah, you got some issues, but you don't have to stay the same way, okay? So now we move on. It says now that peacemakers, okay, that they're supposed to, uh, uh, wisdom that comes from heaven is pure and those who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. In other words, you want to be in right relationship with God. Okay. Now, let's make the transition. Let's go to the fifth chapter of James. When we go to the fifth chapter of James, this is what we go find. Get my technology going here. Yeah. There's no fifth chapter. James 5. The fifth chapter, beginning at the seventh verse, gives us this direction. It said, be patient therefore. Now look, folks have been patient with you. Now, how is it that we get so impatient with people? After all the time that people have been dealing with us and our issues, our uniqueness, it said, be patient therefore, brother, unto the coming of the Lord. That means from the time you born until God come or he called you home. Now watch, watch, watch what it said now. Behold, the husband waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he perceived the early and latter rain. Okay? The husband. So let's do a little deep dive in that. When we talk about the husband, we're talking about the coming of Christ. We're talking about him coming to get a band of organized believers. And he's waiting on us to produce the fruit that the Holy Spirit is within us has caused us to produce, okay? And what it says here in three scriptures, 
So that in Corinthians 1 and 7, it says, so that you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of the Lord. He wants to grow and mature you. That's why he gives you gifts. Galatians says, let us not be well, be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So you keep on doing what's good and what's right, and God will get the blessing to you. You don't have to get the blessing. He going to get it to you. I know I was in Tampa, Florida one year. It was dark outside. And I was walking on the sidewalk, and, and, and I got the feeling to look down. And I looked down at my feet, and somebody had dropped a roll of money. Wasn't nobody around me. All I did was pick it up. Now, it talks about this rain here. And rain is, has a purpose of refreshing. It has a purpose of covering the land so that the harvest can go forth. Well, that's what Jesus wants. He wants a harvest of souls. He wants us to grow. He wants us to be mature. He wants us to be loving just like he is so that he can receive us. And he says, look, I'm going to give you what you need in your due season. I'm going to give you everything you need. I'm going to give you the rank. I'm going to give you the spirit just so that you can go forth and you can produce the pot. In the eighth verse, it says, you too be patient, stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Be patient. And I know a lot of times that ain't easy to do when you're dealing with certain people. Sometimes you want to go out. You know, uh, uh, you feel like you need to release. But it says that because God's coming is close, you don't want to come this far to quit, to turn around, to give up. Okay? Now look what it says here in the ninth verse. It said, grudge not one against another. Brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Now you, you read in the scripture what Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. He is the judge. You ain't got to worry about who downtown in the courthouse wearing a black robe. This is the ultimate judge. Because when he rendered his decision, there is no court of appeals. His decision can't be overturned. The word called him a righteous judge. And he just and fair and justified in everything that he said do. And it identifies in the ninth verse, and I, I like nine. Y'all know I like that. That's the, the, the number of harvest. That's also my birth month. Yeah. And, and so it's a grudge not one against another brother. That means we have a relationship, and that we got a relationship, we got to learn how to get beyond our differences. Nowhere in the Bible does it state that we can always see eye to eye. But guess what? My relationship with you is more important than me having a grudge against you. I'm looking at you sideways when you're trying to do what you're trying to do to advance the kingdom. No, at some point we got to get beyond. At some point we got to sit down and say, look here, I was just wrong. I'm sorry. I ain't intending for it to be that way. I don't know how I got that messed up, but we need to move forward. And whatever I'm willing to do, I'm willing to do. Now, now be patient with me. I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I messed up. I got it myself. I got it my feelings. I got it my emotions. And see, that's what you got to learn to do. Quit acting like you got it all together. And learn how to repent. Listen, let me give you this example. I don't care what car you buy, how much you spend on it. That's going to come a time when the service is due on the car. And if you want to hear something horrible, let somebody get a Mercedes Benz that need an oil change or a Cadillac that need a muffin. You'll wonder what in the world is going on. But when they get that oil change, when they get that tuned up, man, it runs nice. It runs smooth. You know what I'm saying? 
So if a car can get a service, get an oil change, how come you can't come and ask God, hey, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, show me. Work on me. Take this away from me. You know, I got a flip mouth. I'm subject to go off at any time. I got a hot head. I got a temper. But I need you to work with me because I'm your creation. And I don't want to embarrass you. I want to be what you call me to be. I want to live my life so as an example. I don't want to have no grudge. Some people go to their grave mad with brothers and sisters and family members. Mad because of something that happened way back in junior high school. The school ain't even down no more. You, the folks that done did don't even know why they mad anymore. And you still run around here with your lips poked out. That's why your hair won't grow. You got all this bitterness in you. You know what I'm saying? You got these issues going in your mind. If you let go of this, then maybe you can have some peace. Hmm? You ever wonder why you can't sleep at night? You can't sleep at night because you ain't supposed to be dealing with the issue that you're dealing with. You want to know why you got high blood pressure? Because you're worrying about stuff you ain't got no business worrying about. I learned to let stuff go. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. It's a process. Sometimes we're passionate about things. But guess what? My health is important to me. Just because you get old, you ain't got to always have these underlying health issues. Your body is designed to heal itself. And if you learn how to display some peace, some patience, some understanding, and not hold grudges, guess what? Your body can heal itself. That's why we have what's called an immune system. It fights off diseases. Well, inside our spiritual body, we got something called the Holy Spirit. That's why God said he give his angels charge to watch over us. That's why he tell us watch what we see, what we hear, what we let come into our mouth. When somebody says you ugly, you ain't got to come in agreement with that. Hmm? So you got to watch yourself. You got to watch what's coming to your ear gates, your eye gates. Somebody say you ain't going to be nothing. Watch how folks try to slip word curses on you. Whether they joking or whether they just being straight up serious. You know, because the spirit don't discern between a joke and when they being serious. If somebody say, hey, they speaking something in your life and you got the authority, you got the power, you got the ability to cast it down. You tell them quick. Now, I'll come to agreement with that. I'll receive that. You know, I told you all the story about the teacher that told me I was going to be a garbage man. And I, you know, I was young at the time and I was taught to respect teachers, but something just rose up in me. Something didn't agree with that statement. And I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, no ma'am, no ma'am, I don't receive that. Uh-uh, you know. And, and so what she was trying to do, I might have been a young, young lad, you know, I might have been cutting up in school, you know, <laughs> what most young folks do. But guess what? You can't speak my life to me. You ain't saw nothing in my life. You just with me for about eight hours. You think you go dictate my life? I supposed to go along with that, no man. So I cast it down. I rebuked it. Now, you don't know what you might have to do in this life, but my point is this. Uh, you got to watch how people try to put stuff on you. Let's go on to the next verse. And it says, and you know, we count them happy which endure. You have heard the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. And it said that, and above all, my brothers, swear not. All right? Now, I won't tell you now. Sometimes people want to affirm what they say. And I'm going to give you some examples. Let me read the scripture first. But this is the last verse here. It said, but above all things. Now, it's telling you this is the standard. This is like rule number one. Said my brother, because he identifies you uh, as brothers, sisters, depending on your relationship. And he said, if you keep his commandments, you're not only a follower or a believer, a brother or sister, but you become what? A friend of God. 
Isn't that what the scripture said? Alright? It said, but above all things, my brethren, swear not. See, that's where believers get to the to the point that when we have to go downtown and stuff, we ain't supposed to be swearing and taking notes. Why? Because we don't have the ability to keep our own word. Right? Now I'm gonna show you what we do. It said, not only swear not, neither by heaven nor earth, neither by one, any other what? Oath. You see that? A lot of organizations that we join make us take oaths. Right? But this word here said, said, said that we ain't supposed to do that, but then it gives us a plan that said, but let your yea be what? Yea, and your nay be yea, lest you fall into condemnation. So what happened? You know how it is. If you have children and you tell little Billy or little Sally that you go do something and you don't do what you say they don't do, they go remember that. And they're going to be looking at you funny. And they're going to remind you, Daddy, you said that you go do this right here. Now, it don't matter why you didn't do it. But you in the condemnation. But let me back up here. Let me show you what we do. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, as we bring it to a close, we say stuff like, I swear before living God. On everything I love. Right? And all these other things. But the word simply says that's not something that we're supposed to do. And when you do it, you bring yourself into condemnation. Because if you fail to keep that word, now you made a, a promise or you made a commitment to God that you can't honor. See? So we got to be mindful of that. Finally, repent of what you've done. If you need God to help you, if you need God to bless you, want a deeper relationship, then by all means, turn to him and let him finish the work that he has started within you. Okay? Now, this is how we apply our earthly wisdom. This was the last lesson, that right? Yeah. Okay. Listen, I want to encourage you, if you still want the Sunday school book, a commentary, give with us, let us know, so that we can make sure you have this resource Next week, we're going into our new study. We got new materials, and we want you to be blessed. Amen. Amen. We just thank you. Those of you who wish to follow the lesson for next year, next Sunday rather, is coming from Genesis, uh, chapter number 37, verse number 2 through 11, and verses 23 through 24, A, uh, and verse number 28. So I'll say that again. Uh, it's dealing with issues of love coming from Genesis, chapter number 37, 
verses 2 through 11, 23 through 24a, and verse number 28. Amen. So we get prepared uh, to study and receive that word. We also ask that you be blessed. Uh, we need closing prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this opportunity. We thank you for the ability to study your word. And God, we repent of any wrongdoing that we do. We pray now that this word be engrafted in our heart, that you would mold it and allow it to grow. We pray now for this service, man and woman of God, that will bring forth this word, this message. We pray that it fall on good soil, that it produce good fruit. And above all, we use this time, this affliction, to reach people that may never come through the door. But we pray, Father, that you would anoint the telecast. You would anoint this teaching session, that it may fall on someone, that they may get a greater understanding of you, your word, and the life you desire for us. In Jesus' name, we pray under the covering power of the blood, the redeemer of God, say amen.